I figured I'd talk about the most recent movie that I'd seen because I hadn't done a video in a little while. Um, I had a whole thing recorded for Mother and for Kingsman, and it was, they, they were both in soft focus, and I was just kind of going around in circles on my feelings on them, and um, yeah, I was reviewing a video game at the time. So it just didn't really pan out. Um, but basically, long and short of it is, Mother, uh, uh, Kingsman, uh, that's, those are my reviews of those two. Um, but most importantly, I saw a pinnacle moment in filmmaking uh, this weekend. And I hope you did too. It's called The Snowman. Um, and it's a, it's a beautiful disaster of a film. And while I'm driving, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. If you haven't seen the trailer, the idea is that it's a film noir modern story. It's based on a novel that's apparently a pretty good novel, everybody says, but there's no guarantees I haven't read it. Um, so the film has a lot of star power behind it. It's got Michael Fassbender, executive producer Martin Scorsese, the guy who directed shit. Dude's name is Tomas Alderson. Thank you, Google Assistant. Um, he's the man responsible for giving us... <coughs> glorious films like Let the Right One In and Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, both kind of slow burn, very tense films. Uh, Rebecca Ferguson is the lead actress opposite from Michael Fassbender. You also have uh, lots of character actors. You have James Darcy, you have Toby Jones, you have uh, J.K. Simmons, uh, Val Kilmer. But basically, the, the my point is Universal put a lot of A-list people into this production, and it is one of the most atrocious, biggest mistakes in less than amateur filmmaking that I've ever seen. So, the premise of The Snowman is this cold, hard boil uh, noir film where Michael Fassbender plays a detective on a case that is, uh, there's, the, there's a, a snowman killer. He you know, preys on victims and leaves weird notes for the police, kind of like toying with them, very quasi Zodiac style. Um, but he dismembers, uh, <laughs> he dismembers his victims with a fishing line or some kind of like, tool that like cuts things really quickly, but it looks like a fishing, fishing line. Anyway, um, and then he, uh, you know, reassembles their body as a part of a snowman. Um, as far as the rest of the film goes, I can't really tell you much because I saw it at a 10 o'clock screening and I thought it was because I was tired. No, nobody else in the industry, I don't even think the people who edited the film can tell what the fuck was going on in this movie. Because the film opens with a big mistake, and I'll say it in the words of my friend Miles, uh, opens on the Norwegian sex police uh, arriving to Gestapo, uh, a woman and her son, and... Uh, <laughs> There's like some weird visual parable with coffee beans and uh, domestic abuse. And she takes the son out, chases after this man uh, amidst very bizarre jump cuts and really bad editing, by the way. Um, and then they end up, she drives onto this lake. It's like ice covered lake because the whole film's set in Norway. The boy's like trying to get the, the mom out of the car as it is clearly obvious that the car is going to sink in the icy water. And she just kind of just sits there. Um, <laughs> it's really bad. And then the film hard cuts to the title sequence. And you're like, oh, I just got the backstory on the killer that comes at the end of the episode of Criminal Minds, or in the middle of the episode of Criminal Minds. But before we even encounter this person killing, we're giving a reason for why they are killing, and it doesn't even actually have any kind of consistency. It's more just kind of like, the kid was killed like a snowman while his mom was killed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Okay, so uh, then we have uh, a bunch of really bad filmmaking decisions as this movie kind of plods its way to a detective into a detective story. You have Michael Fassbender as a detective who is an ex-husband and detective of some kind who says he drinks a lot, but really he just smokes in every other shot of the film. And he has a really interesting habit of randomly waking up on the street 
and the storytellers in the in the in the filmmakers don't really give us any inclination as to why whether because he has an apartment he has a home that he lives in by himself as well as his ex-wife's house with his son um even though she's seeing a guy he just ran he just they just cut to him randomly waking up on the street like he's some kind of drunkard homeless man but we don't ever actually see him drinking more than a couple of times we're just kind of told i'm the drunk oh oh boy and it's not like the the acting is particularly bad throughout this film either it's the acting is probably some of the best part the acting and cinematography it's almost as though these people just showed up to set and were told like don't worry we got this good and it's a film that should have just died on the vine and these people were like oh i wonder what happened to that and then this movie came out and they're probably like shaking their heads in the theater in the press junk it's like oh god what have i done sweet jesus what have i done so yeah um and Re- rebecca ferguson plays his uh his foil she's like the the young up-and-coming detective you know the scully to his molder i guess i don't know there's a lot of just weird subplotting going on you have jk simmons in the film an american actor with a bad british accent in a film about norway or norwegians and all it is is that they hired an oscar winner to be pervy um and then you also have uh val kilmer and i don't know if you viewer have seen val kilmer these days uh the man has recently recovered from cancer and uh you know he's a little gaunt looking you know it's just like his skin doesn't look the best a great guy talented actor sure okay um he looks miserable in this film and it, i think they literally pulled him off of a deathbed to to perform maybe less than 10 lines in a subplot that provides really no importance to the main film and not only that but i guess in the you know in the chemotherapy he had like a tongue swelling problem and so he probably wasn't able to enunciate his lines and i can tell you why because his scenes are obviously scarily dubbed over in adr like a bad kung fu movie um i can't remember who who it was that had made that that connection but it, that's exactly how it looks and it's really jarring and it's not even val kilmer's voice so whew, okay so um it's just uh the, the film is just this strange mess of of really bad editing decisions and I don't even know if they had a complete script when they went to go make this film. I don't know if they had a film and tried to <clears throat> hurriedly re-edit it for a theatrical cut and then just kind of ran out of time. I don't know, but there's just so many bizarre choices throughout that it's impossible to pinpoint what went wrong, except maybe there were so many windows There were so many windows in this movie. Every other shot of Michael Fassbender looking solemn was him looking through a window. Um, And even in the houses, there's like, there's windows into, there's like full body windows looking into rooms from the outside so that it looks like a theater uh, production. There's windows between rooms so that people can look at each other. It's, it's bizarre. If anybody's from Norway watching this, please explain to me if it's a cultural thing, but um in the film it didn't really provide any kind of substance um so anyway it's just really funny because i have a, a, a friend tyler who also writes on youngfolks.com and he was in um universal hollywood um this past weekend um and he was on you know they were promoting the film hardcore the snowman and it, <laughs> it makes you wonder how can a single person who has seen any of this film beyond a trailer could confidently be paid to promote it. I don't understand. And it's sad because they're resting their laurels on the performance of Michael Fassbender, and he's not even really a major character, or if he is, he doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue. So it's one of those, there's a reason that it has 8% on Rotten Tomatoes, okay? And I usually don't care about arbitrary numbers on Rotten Tomatoes scores. I think it's just a really bad boiling down of an average score. Uh, It literally turns the nuance of every person's opinion into a pass-fail system and just kind of smashes them all together. But this movie is 
spectacularly bad that goes the way the other way around so if you if you are like me and you want to learn the film industry and oh it's raining wow. um if you if, if, it, it's it's similar to dc's suicide squad okay i'm up the school of thinking that if you like the film suicide squad uh, you have no taste. If you like Suicide Squad, that's fine. You just don't know what you're talking about. Um, and this movie is of the same effect. So, um, I recommend watching The Snowman if you want to watch an experiment in how to not make a film, or at the very least, how to not edit a film. Um, it, it's, of all the bad movies that have come out this year, and there's a number of them, and I've seen them from Alien Covenant, yes, I take back my positive feelings on Alien Covenant in retrospect, uh, to Transformers 5, to Pirates of the Caribbean 5, no, this takes the cake, this is, this is so bad you must see. Don't pay for it in the theater, maybe find other avenues, or wait until it goes on cable or Netflix, um, but at some point, find a way to watch it just to see how bad they fucked up something that could have actually been great because Universal was convinced this was going to get them like Oscar noms. Uh, so you got this and you got the mummy to work with. Thanks, guys. It's rain, a lot of rain. Um, so if you saw the snowman, what did you think? Please tell me. I'm curious. Um, so sound off in the comments below. Thanks for driving with me as I go on my little adventure to get some pork belly for a ramen recipe.